What up, players? It's War Boss Tay back up in this mug. Been a while, but I finally finished these three Mighty Skull Crushers that come in the Start Collecting box set for the Corn Bloodbound. You can also get them on their own in a box of six, and these models are just fantastic. Can't wait for you to see what's on the sprue, so let's hop in. What up, players? It's War Boss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to my review of the Mighty Skull Crushers that came with the Corn Bloodbound Start Collecting box set. You don't get six, it would be awesome if you did, and it's too bad they didn't come out with a new set of instructions because now I really want these other three guys. You only get three in the Start Collecting box set, but it's a good way to start your collection. I think these models are much more interesting than the ones with the blood letters on the backs. I think blood letters on demon machines are just not as interesting to look at. Seeing these humanoid like chaos knight figures on these big chunky corn machines are I think that's a much more interesting look. I've not ever seen them built or painted now that I think about it except on the box cover and I know I've been out of the hobby for a while but I think it's gonna be really interesting so you got three sprues and we'll do a quick overview first to show you just generally what you get and then we will take a look at each one now because this is the first set that I have of these I'm gonna go with the obvious choice to build out my three with a standard bearer and musician that means I'm gonna have a load of extra weapons and bits and uh, I don't mind that now I've never collected the skull crushers with the corn demons on them so looking at them right now with the kind of a uh, mishmash of the melding of the steel and the skin. It reminds me of the Forge Fiend and all the other Chaos engines that have come out before, but it's still interesting to look at. And uh, here we've got some very interesting looking helmets. And uh, I like that all of the helmets, they're, they're doing this thing where uh, they're trying to differentiate them. They don't want them all to look like uh, mindless uniform uh, chaos warriors they want them all to look a little a little bit different with where the skulls are placed what the grills look like and uh, it's gonna be interesting to build them up and paint them up these armor plates on any of the chaos armies chaos warriors chaos space marines space marines in general where they have these large plates with the rounded edges is good to practice your blending your highlighting and uh, if you go with an airbrush and you slowly build up the layers of highlights, then that's a good skill to have. And if you're going with a paintbrush and you're just doing edge highlighting, that's also a good way to build your painting skill. And anyways, any model you paint is gonna help you become a better painter. So when you're working with these bigger models, cavalry models or models like this, where the, the mount is not a horse, but something completely different and interesting to look at, you're gonna become better as a painter. The more you paint, the more uh, skill you're gonna get, the more comfortable you're gonna get. And what I love about this set is that you have a number of different textures. As a painter, I'm always looking at the textures you get to work on. And just looking at the Chaos Knights, the riders, you've got cloth, chainmail, the plates, which is standard for uh, any kind of Chaos figure or Space Marine or, you know, the standard warrior figures that you get but you also have the skulls obviously because they're corn and you can do a lot of interesting detail work by painting like how games workshop standard corn figures are you paint the armor plates in red and then you do the uh, detail in bone or not bone but brass bronze gold so the mixture of the red and the gold is going to make a very interesting looking figure. I'm sorry, I just came from work. <laughs> my fingernails are nasty. I washed my hands before I got out here because I wanted to not bring any of the grime from my workplace into these uh, videos, but I did not scrub under my fingernails as well as I should have. So please, uh, I'm sorry about that. I'm a hardworking man <laughs> and uh, it helps me to pay for my hobby. So uh, my bad. I do like how they're giving you a range of uh, weapons. You can either go with these spears. I think the spears are just so much more interesting to look at. 
and uh, it also gives you the texture of working with this looks like wood yeah it looks like uh either wood or you know maybe it could be steel that's just got chips and nicks on it uh or it looks like it could also be wood that has uh been wrapped up so this uh, wrapping is going to be cloth. You've got you can work on the texture for these tassels as as hair, and then of course the machine beasts, the skull crushers themselves, are going to be a mixture of uh, these weird twisted armor as well as some fleshy bits. And look uh, underneath, you can see the wiring and the tubing, and uh, really interesting. I think if I ever get to paint these. I'm gonna do like some oil, oily residue that's, that could also be blood coming out from the vents and the, the sides. The great thing about doing these models also, if you want to add some weathering or some interesting looking streaking with the grime and the rust and the oil, you can do that because these are basically like demon machines. So any kind of old machine that you see in real life, you can carry on some of that, uh, some of those effects onto your models by uh, lining or, or dragging down a line of brown and uh, brown paint to represent oil and then taking some gloss varnish and just painting over the brown paint to make it look like it's wet and it's dripping. That's a little uh, quick tip right there. But I, I love these models. They look pretty cool and I'm gonna look over now the uh, instructions and we'll talk about how we want to build these guys up. Yeah, so you could either build them with the spears or with the hand weapon and, and shield uh, or the spear and the shield. I, I like the shields. The shields are really nice. I didn't really get to talk about those, but they all are a little bit different. They've all got the corn symbols on them, obviously, but I think uh, building them up with... If I had three more, I would definitely do spears and shields, but because I love to build the interesting looking models, I think I'm going to go with the champion holding... Can you build a champion with different weapons? It looks like he's holding a an axe, a double-headed axe with two blades as well as a shield on both. Yeah, it looks like the, the champion, you can only build him in, in one configuration, but that's okay. So it looks like the mounts, the skull crusher mounts go together pretty simply, and I'm not expecting too much difficulty. It looks like the back legs might be set as to how they go, but the front legs look like they do have a little bit of range to them because they're on these ball joints. So maybe, yeah, it looks like the back legs do kind of slot in very specific angles, but maybe we can, maybe, maybe we can do something with the, the front legs. You don't have to have them exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I was wrong. But that first impression I kind of went with, but it looks like they might be built specifically to fit in the angle of the shoulders there. Do you have these models? I'm interested to know if you've got these models, how you built them up. Are they, um, did you find them easy or difficult to build and put together? It's been so long, you know, Games Workshop is doing all these crazy mounts like the, the INF Deepkin and, and all of these uh, skull crushers. Look at that, man, wouldn't it be so cool to have six of those? Oh, what a bummer. Um, yeah, I only got three. Oh, well, but uh, it's been so long since I painted just like a regular old horse like a Bretonian horse <laughs> or an Empire Knight horse They all have to have these crazy crazy doodads So this looks like the skull hunter. That's a champion and uh, I'm really happy that they show you how all the pieces go together the arrows and uh, it makes me think of back in the old days when Games Workshop, before they even had these 3D printed instructions, remember when they would just kind of like draw what the model of Space Marine is supposed to look like and they don't show you how the models go on together and, or anything like that. That's interesting. You got little back nipple tassels. <laughs> Interchangeable parts. So it looks like, yeah, for the heads you can change out the spikes. Not too sure how how much that really affects anything. I do like how you get five heads. Actually, you know what? I'm I'm maybe I have to I have to double check and count because I'm thinking like is this instruction pack just kitted out for 
you to have six models to work on rather than just three. I don't know. Like, do you get five and ten? Do you get ten extra heads? Or I don't know. It doesn't matter. The heads are interesting to look at. So, uh, what's also cool is you could. It looks like you could use them for your Space Marines, for your Chaos Berserkers. Um, here's your standard bearer. I love cloth standards. You can work in your freehand. You can just be plain and simple and just work on your highlighting. Uh, it's really cool. Horn blower. Horatio. He looks pretty simple, just a regular uh, guy. The only difference is the horn, and the horn looks pretty simple to uh, put together and paint. And you got your skull crushers over here. Looks like they all have to have the shield, and then it just depends on if you want to build them up with the choppy axe or the stabby spear. And I think it's interesting that all these doggies get little collars. Isn't that cute? It's like a little paint, like a little nameplate, like Spike or Fido or something. Oh man, I wish I had more because I would totally build them up with these spears. They look just so great on a beefy mount, a uh, cavalry rider with a spear just looks so cool especially if the mount looks like it's in motion like it's charging forward man oh well i guess this is just uh for me to put it together and uh, you can build it any way you want but i do like going with the interesting route and having something more interesting to look at so i'm gonna build these up just to quickly look at the bases right here this is what they look like and uh, yeah, they're large cavalry bases. We will put them together and see how they look at the end of the video. Stay tuned. All right, players, at the end of the day, here we are, three mighty skull crushers ready for painting. Had so much fun building them up. Like I mentioned numerous times in the video, I went with a command group for these three because I wanted them to have that, uh, that wow factor of seeing character models on the field. If I get any more, I would definitely build them up as spearmen. And uh, here's the first model. The champion, I decided to give him the mount that was rearing on its hind legs as if it was mid-charge. He's leading the way, aiming his hand forward. The uh, arms for the champion only extend out like you see this one do, so he can only look like he's holding his axe up and out in front of him, uh, which is okay because he is. if you're going to be going with this champion option, then you do want to have a model that looks like he's uh, going, going full tilt towards the enemy. I love all the different details on all of these miniatures. The sculpt of the legs that are holding on to the saddle, the beast itself, the different plates. Uh, all of the textures look really, really well done. You can see all the scratches and the battle damage. They put all the torn fabric. And uh, I really, really like all of the attention to detail in all of these models. It's going to make it easier for you to paint up. You're not going to have to worry about how to paint on these scratches. You could just do some light highlighting to emphasize where those nicks in the steel plates are, as well as on the armor and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. For the musician, I decided to go with the unhelmeted head just because he's holding a horn. You want to make sure your musician can technically play their instrument while they're in battle so he doesn't have a helmet. I might go back and glue a helmet somewhere onto his saddle so it wouldn't look like he's completely uh, undefended or defenseless rather with his helmet. But for now, I'm, I like the look of the model with the horns and the sculpt of his face, the detail in his expression, if you can see it, is just really, really nice. That glowering uh, scowl is just really well done. There's, yeah, no question about it, Games Workshop is at the top of its game it, when it comes to the attention, the detail on these models. They, they really are outdoing themselves with every new sculpt. I've uh, One of my hangups with the corn models was that they were just too too fetishy. They had too much, too much corn going on. Like this guy, he's got a corn symbol on top of a corn symbol. His, uh, I don't know if you can see his torso the next time it goes around to his body, but his, he's got like a corn shoulder pad, but there's also a corn little shield at the bottom of his pauldron. So yeah, so there's a corn symbol on his pauldron, under a corn symbol on a little shield, over the corn symbol on his breastplate. It's just a lot of corn. <laughs> so, I, it's okay. It's it's going to be fun to paint up, and uh, it's nice to know that the design team 
got to have some fun. So I really enjoy painting these guys up. You guys are uh, building them up and I can't wait to slap some paint on them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you'd like to see more, you can join the Players Club. And uh, I'll put the links in the description below if you would like to uh, become a patron. Thanks again so much and we will see you in the next video.